So years ago when I was discerning my vocation, I uh, spoke to Father Paul, the founder of our community, and uh, I said, you know, I just have this, you know, you don't, you don't you know how to phrase the thing, like, so you're all kind of awkward when you're, when you're talking about it. I said, I don't know, I have this kind of um, idea about, about, about priesthood. And he said, okay. And he, he, he asked me uh, one question, which is really, really important and really obvious and never asked. He just said to me, uh, yes, do you love the Lord? We, we just, we don't, we never phrase, we never say it that way. We never, I don't think we ever express it that way, even, even to the Lord himself. I mean, I think we all get kind of awkward if we have to say, Lord, I love you. So uh, just to, to be asked kind of so bluntly, you know, do you love the Lord? I suppose, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I don't know, I th yeah, I think so. Do I? I, I don't know, I think, yeah. I, I, <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's not the kind of question I ever asked myself. So I was, I was just, uh, I gave kind of the right answer, if you will, but uh, it, it was just a, a, an odd a kind of a curveball of a question. I didn't see that one coming. Like, I mean, you know, you have, maybe abuse have been asked, you know, do you go to mass? Do you pray regularly? Have you ever been to Medjugorje? Uh, but but do, do you love the Lord? I say, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess I do. <clears throat> but I remember seeing pictures of myself as well back in those days, so my kind of late teens and early 20s, and well, late teens more. Um, just thinking, my goodness, there were times when, when the Lord really wasn't a priority to me, even though exteriorly I was doing all the right things. People who looked at our family said, you know, they're, they're going to Mass, aren't they wonderful? But there really were quite long periods where the Lord wasn't even close to a priority in my life. Even, even now, to be honest, I mean, public confession here, I mean... <laughs> Even I, I know even now the Lord deserves more of my heart. Even now. There's always, there's, 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 there's always more. There's always more we can and should give. Uh, there's always more that he deserves. In this Gospel of the Last Supper, there's a, a detail which I pointed out before, but it, it, it's, it definitely merits to be pointed out again. Jesus is troubled in spirit because he knows he's going to be betrayed. He knows that one of his closest friends is going to betray him. He knows who it is, obviously. The disciples looked at one another, wondering which one he meant. The disciple Jesus loved, so John was next to Jesus. So we know that John was next to Jesus because the gospel tells us. <clears throat> and the next line is a small bit unusual in that it says, Simon Peter signed to him, saying to him, ask him which one he means. Now, traditionally, we think, traditionally, when you see, when you see artworks, you see the, the Last Supper, uh, uh, Da Vinci's Last Supper, that, you have Peter on one side and John on the other, right? So the disciple Jesus loved, if you will, because we know biblically John was definitely there. And then we kind of presume Peter was on the other side. If Peter was on the other side, why would he be signing to John who's sitting right here? Who is it that Jesus meant? It doesn't make any sense for Peter to be on the opposite side to Jesus. The opposite, yeah, the other side of, of, of Jesus to St. John. Because then the signing thing wouldn't work because... It's plain obvious, you know, I mean, I can see you, Peter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it would just make no sense. It would make no sense to have Peter on this side and John there. So we know John was there, but it's quite likely Peter wasn't there. Because why? What's the, what's the, what's the reply? What does Jesus answer? It is the one, Jesus said, to whom I give the piece of bread that I shall dip in my dish. Which means Judas is within arm's length of Jesus. Because he doesn't pass the bread to someone else to get it down to, Jews who, uh, to Judas, who traditionally, artistically, is represented at the end of the table with a little bag of silver. Right. He's not at the end of the table. So it could be, it's, it's a hypothesis anyway, but I think it's likely that Judas is actually right beside Jesus, dips in the dish, and gives it to Judas. And I think this is a powerful expression of Jesus mercy and of his love for each one of us even when we fall short of the mark even when we're not what we're supposed to be we're maybe hopefully hopefully at least a work in progress but we're not there yet and even then it's like the Lord never says you know you end of the table or you out of this room he doesn't and won't give up on us ever he won't ever give up on us 
And so even, I think, his heart is turned very much towards those who have rejected him. His heart is turned towards those who do not love him, towards those who have betrayed him. And still he welcomes them back and still he calls them and still he loves them. So then, then our reaction to all of this, like what, what is it, you know, when if we were asked, like in the face of this divine mercy, in the face of this divine love, what is your reaction? What do we do? How do we respond to all of that? So often we simply don't. We just don't respond. We just, we do the thing. We maybe turn up for the, for mass or the liturgies or whatever it is and do what we're supposed to do and, and, and then leave with no response to this question. Do you love me? Because that's, that's what it's all about. That's why we pray. We pray because we want to spend time with God whom we love. We go to mass because we want to spend time with God whom we love. Even in Holy Family here, we do what we're supposed to do. We do our jobs. We get up on time. We keep our rooms tidy. We do keep our rooms tidy. We clean bathrooms well. We clean up the kitchen after ourselves. Whatever it is we're doing, we do it well. We do it to the best of our ability because we love the Lord. That's why. That's the root of that should be the root of everything we do. If we have missed that point, we have completely missed the point of Holy Family. We've completely missed the point of the Christian life. We've completely missed the point of what it means to be a baptized Catholic. We're supposed to be walking with the Lord on a daily basis because we love him, because he loved us first, while we were still sinners, as scripture tells us. While we were still immersed in our sin, God loved you. So what is your reaction? What is your response? Because again, if we miss this, we've just missed the point of everything. Might as well go home. Mother Teresa wrote a, a very famous letter based, uh, inspired by a writing of St. John Paul II when he wrote uh, about a reflection on, on Jesus' words, I thirst on the cross. And I just want to finish today's homily with, with, with this because it is, it's very simple, it's typical for, for St. Mother Teresa, but very powerful. And she asks a number of questions. And to be honest, those questions are left as cliffhangers because the answer isn't given here because the answer isn't for her to give. The answer is for you to give because no one can answer for you. And she writes, I worry that some of you still have not really met Jesus one to one, you and him alone. Jesus wants me to tell you again how much is the love he has for each one of you beyond all that you can imagine. We may spend time in chapel but have you seen with the eyes of your soul how he looks on you with love? Do you really know the living Jesus? Not from books, but from being with him in your heart. Have you heard the loving words he speaks to you? Never give up on this daily intimate contact with Jesus as a real and living person, not just an idea. How can we last even one day of our lives without hearing Jesus say, I love you? Impossible. Our soul needs that as much as the body needs air to breathe. If not, prayer is dead. Meditation is only thinking. Jesus wants you each to hear him speaking in the silence of your heart. Not only he loves you, even more, he longs for you. He misses you when you don't come close. He thirsts for you. He loves you always, even when you don't feel worthy, even if you are not accepted by others, even by yourself sometimes. He is the one who always accepts you. Why does Jesus say, I thirst? What does it mean? Something so hard to explain in words. If you remember anything from Mother's letter, remember this. I thirst is something much deeper 
than just Jesus saying, I love you. Until now, until you know deep inside that Jesus thirsts for you, you cannot begin to know who, who he wants to be for you or who he wants you to be. He knows your weakness. He wants only your love. He wants only the chance to love you. Amen. So dear brothers and sisters, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank you all for joining us on YouTube or on Paving the Way Home or on Spotify, wherever you've listened to these homilies. Thank you so much for being part of our mission and for continuing to support our mission. It was a great gift that during lockdown uh, we could branch out or broaden uh, our, our outreach so much uh, through technology. So it was, that's been a wonderful privilege and honour. Uh, I'd ask two things, if I may. <clears throat> One that we'd really appreciate your prayers for our mission. So we have our young people here with us this year. And then there are also, there's a youth ministry, family ministry, and hopefully in the near future, men's ministry, which we hope to engage in. So we'll ask for your prayers for uh, all of those outreaches. And if you feel that the Lord is calling you to support us also financially, uh, we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Uh, running a place like this is, is not cheap, and uh, we do need uh, benefactors' help to, to keep the show on the road and to keep our doors open and to keep this place of formation uh, alive for uh, the young people that come to us. We have opened our applications for next year as well. So if you know anybody who might like to apply, they can do so through our website, holyfamilymission.ie. And also, if you'd like to make any donations, you can do so through our website, holyfamilymission.ie, or send us an email if you'd like to uh, arrange some other form of donation. But we would be greatly, greatly appreciative of any support that you can give us uh, through your prayer and through your financial support. All right. So God bless, and we're praying for you here in Holy Family.